Hi, my name is uh, Tzvi Lap. I'm happy to be here and share with you some of the research, just a broad overview of the research I've been doing related to self-supervised learning, uh, in short, SSL, uh, and specifically for object detection. Uh, a lot of my research has been implemented with PyTorch Lightning Bolts, which I think has the best SSL capabilities out there. It's a, a lot to do with some of the reproducing that Ananya just presented. I think that's what makes PyTorch Lightning Bolts such a viable option for uh, anyone who's really interested in getting involved in SSL. Uh, I think it's really, that's, it's a really, uh, I think one of the best libraries there are. So that's really a great job to the PyTorch Lightning team. Uh, so SSL, I'll give first a, just a very broad overview of uh, SSL self-supervised learning uh, at large and specifically get into the, some of the issues that, uh, that I'm trying to tackle with object detection and self-supervised learning. So SSL has shown uh, very promising results in image classification with papers such as SimCLR, SWAV, BYOL. Uh, Anana just presented SimCLR and SWAV. And one of the more recent papers, SimCM. Uh, SSL is clearly an exciting field since it alleviates the need to curate massive label to data sets for supervised learning, which is an expensive and long process, right? So you can, in essence, automatically gain uh, a tremendous amount just by having uh, unlabeled data uh, by, and by using SSL with the un, on the unlabeled data. So right, the goal of the SSL algorithm, uh, whether it be SimCLR, SWAV, or BYOL, BY, uh, particularly in the visual context, could be summarized as a means to achieve a generic multi-purpose feature extractor without label data by pre-training on a synthetic task, uh, right? There's the, the recent papers that have shown the most promising results have been on contrastive learning. I won't delve too much into that, but that's a, uh, we're trying to um, contrast and repel, uh, contrast, uh, sorry, uh, make uh, similar representations, similar views of the same image, uh, similar and repel views from different images. That's just by and large an overview of the contrastive self-supervised learning task. So one of the standard ways to assess an SSL method's ability in extracting features is by performing what is called the linear evaluation protocol, where what you do is you freeze the trained SSL backbone and detach one or two linear heads and begin fitting the head on the downstream task. So more concretely, just to give an example of what this linear protocol evaluation is really about. Um, so what an example would be, you would take uh, the SWAV algorithm, train it on ImageNet, which is a very large data set with a ResNet 50. And then in the linear protocol, what you do after you train the SWAV backbone, you would freeze the ResNet 50, and then you would add a linear head and only fit that linear head on the downstream task with the, which is in this case, ImageNet with its labels in the supervised regime. And that's an S and a, a way to see how well, right? Because when you have a very pre-trained backbone and a thin linear head, what you're doing, you're training a model with relatively low parameters, but at the same time getting very, very good uh, results on ImageNet. That's what uh, SimCLR was the first paper to really show very good results on ImageNet. Now, interestingly, the mentioned papers, when they evaluate the feature extractors for object detection, they do not freeze the backbone. Again, when, when they do this linear protocol, linear evaluation protocol on tasks, which are object detection, they don't do the freezing of the backbone. Rather, they need to fine tune the SSL trained backbone to perform well on object detection tasks like COCO. So just to emphasize, the mentioned papers achieved very promising results using SSL, uh, right? Because this pre-trained backbone is a good starting point, better than random, and maybe even better than ImageNet, pre-trained backbone. Uh, but for object detection, they needed to fine tune the backbone. Uh, and it would be very useful to have a frozen SSL backbone for object detection. Why, why would this be? Because if we have a frozen backbone, one, we need to let train less parameters. And in addition, we would have more confidence that we have a better inductive bias towards object detection as well. So object detection, uh, it's a more challenging task than image classification since object detection is the coupling of object classification 
along with localization of the objects themselves, right? Because we need to be able to find the object and actually classify to which class the object belongs. So I believe therefore that the SSL task for pre-training the backbone needs to effectively teach the backbone or a few end layers in the backbone, the ability to localize or at least have an inductive bias well suited for localization, uh, right? I'm, I'm presuming that I'm, I'm, I'm hypothesizing that uh, in order to have, be able to effectively freeze the backbone, we need to introduce the concept of localization to the pre-trained backbone with SSL. So an example of a recent uh, task proposed in a new paper called UpDetter, uh, which bases itself on Detter. Um, it's a paper which uses a transformer with, uh, with for object detection. So what they propose in UpDetter is that what is called a task, which is called random query patch detection, where at large, what is done is a random patch is selected from the image. And the task is to detect where the patch coordinates are in the image. So this task is used to pre-train the transformer head of the, of the debtor object detector in an unsupervised manner. Now, interestingly, in the pre-training here, they do freeze the backbone. But again, when they go on to assess the backbone's ability, uh, they, they do fine tune uh, the backbone itself. So this was an example of a type of task uh, which is tailored to help localize, uh, to help give the, the net neural network the ability to have the, to have the inductive bias with, uh, to be able to localize effectively. By what? By cropping out patches and predicting the coordinates themselves. So what I've been researching are ways to instill a backbone with additional ability to localize that way we will be able to freeze the backbone and to only fit a linear, a linear layer or a thin encoder decoder for object detection as well. So I've been using SimCLR backbone for yellow and Detter and just started testing out a recent implementation of mine uh, in SimCM, SimCM as well. Uh, and it's been very interesting to see how uh, it's not surprising that when you unfreeze more when you freeze the entire backbone performance is less good when you're using these methods out of the box and, but when you uh, unfreeze more and more obviously the performance is better because you're actually training more parameters in the backbone itself um, so one of the directions that i've been exploring is using multitask training uh, where i add in, a, in a, add additional tasks to contrastive learning to introduce the concept of localization to the backbone itself so um at this point, uh, you know, thank you for listening, everyone, and uh, I'm free for questions if there are any. Thank you, Tzvi, for your talk. Uh, it was very interesting. Uh, let's see if we have any questions from the audience. Um, it looks like the people want slides. So if you have any uh, materials or resources that we can share with people later, I think that would be great. Um, I think you recently uh, started contributing to Bolt so uh, people can find the code there and play around with it. Uh, we have one question from uh, Ananya. Do you see any benefit on adding this localization to other downstream tasks like instance segmentation? I have, so I haven't uh, tested instance segmentation, um, but I'm, I mean, I'm assuming that uh, um, just like when, for instance, segmentation, when you pre-initialize pre uh, the backbone to ImageNet, so the whole presumption is that what's that? Uh, the contrastive self-supervised learning, as you know, uh, is uh, better uh, inductive, have in better inductive biases. So I'm assuming that they would also perform well, but uh, I haven't uh, tested it on instance segmentation specifically. And by multitask training, do you mean using something like MAML? Uh, so from what I recall, MAML is a, it's a meta learning uh, algorithm. Uh, so no, I, was, I didn't mean in terms of, meta, it's a, MAML is a very, um, right? You introduce multiple tasks, correct? But what I meant is uh, really just multitasking by um, introducing the same task to the same backbone at the same time and just aggregating the loss itself. 